Welcome to another episode of the Prophecy Kids. Hello, everyone. Hi. We're so glad you could join us today. We are now covering today the third angel's message, the final message out of the three angels' messages. And so we learned about the first angel and the second angel, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Now, are you guys ready to get into the third angel's message? Yes. 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 We see the third angel's message is found in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And we see that the third angel says the following things. If anyone wants to the beast stand his image and receive his mark on his forehead and hand. It's angels saying the people who worship the who? Beast. Beast and his what? Image. And his image and receive his what? Mark. Mark. On his forehead. Or on his hand. hand. What is this mark? The mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. We learned about the mark of the beast. Remember that? What happens if you don't get the mark of the beast? Can I buy something? Do you have the mark of the beast? No, I don't. Then you cannot buy anything. You cannot what? Buy or sell. You cannot buy or sell. And also, if you still choose not to get the mark of the beast, what happens? Excellency, you should die. You die. A death decree upon those who will not receive the mark of the beast. Oh, this is serious. The third angel is talking to a group of people, the majority of the people in the world who do worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand. Is that good or bad? Bad. And why is that bad? Who should we worship? Jesus. 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 God alone deserves worship. Isn't that right? Yes. I lift my hands in praise to what is the opposite of the mark of the beast? The seal of God. The seal of God. So in the very end time, there's two groups. The ones with the seal of God are who? God's people. That's right. God's people. The ones with the mark of the beast are who? Satan's people. Satan's people. That's right. There's only two sides. There's no in-between. Have you guys ever played a game? Yes. And there's two teams, right? Whenever somebody chooses you, they say, that person's on my team. And God and Satan are picking people for their team. God is saying, who is on my side? Satan ah. says, who is on my side? It's a game between good and evil versus right and and wrong. Breaking news today. Due to increasing natural disasters, calamities, and civil unrest ravaging the face of this planet, an overwhelming response from the Christian world says that these are signs of God's displeasure with the rampant immorality that exists in the world today. And unless we turn back to God, it is only going to get worse. The solution is to institute Sunday as a day of rest, to close businesses, and to spend time with family, and to worship. The president has since approved a bill into law that mandates Sunday as the day of rest required by everyone to observe. Those who refuse to comply are declared enemies of the state. Since this law has been passed and enforced, a resistance group, who claim to be Sabbath keepers, who do not comply with this law, have been imprisoned and punished. The rest of them are being hunted down by both the law and religious vigilante groups who say that if these Sabbath keepers are not seeking to appease God, they are part of the problem and it is better for them to be eliminated for the common good of the world. APB on two suspects who are not complying with Sunday observance.
but let's take a look at furthermore to what this angel has to say. He himself will also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Wrath is like when somebody is angry. God is angry with these people who have decided to worship the beast, those who chose against God and his commandments. Which is poured out for slain. God pours out the wrath of God upon these people. It says it's poured without mixture. The pure wrath of God was poured without mixture of God's mercy. God's mercy is not in this mixture. Into the cup of indignation. Those who receive the mark of the beast, they are going to receive a cup that has the wrath of God. That's not good. But did you know that Jesus also had to drink from a cup? If you yeah. look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus is struggling in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is right before he faces the cross. He's struggling because there's a cup before him. And what does Jesus say? Let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me, Father. Not my will, but your will. Why did Jesus not want to drink this cup? Do you know what's in this cup? It's the wrath of God. Jesus has to drink this cup so that he can experience the wrath of God, the wrath of God upon sinners. So you know what? We all have to experience that wrath of God. God has to punish us for all the bad things we've done. But Jesus took our place because Jesus died for us and took our punishment. That's right. Jesus died for us and took upon himself our punishment. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Now back to the third angel's message. The third angel's message says that those who receive the mark of the beast and they worship the beast and his image, they will drink the wine of the wrath of God poured without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And because they reject what Jesus did for them, which was to drink that cup, guess what? They're going to drink. Isn't that sad? These people on earth who decided not to accept Jesus, they have to go through a punishment that they don't even have to go through because Jesus paid for it. But when they say, I don't need Jesus, I'm going to worship this beast, I'm going to accept his mark, they are choosing to drink the cup of the wrath of God. That's right, drink the cup of the wrath of God. Is that good or bad? Bad. It's bad. Very bad. And what else does an angel say? He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. In the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. The third angel mentions fire and brimstone. Do you know where else in the Bible fire and brimstone is mentioned? No. Abraham. Remember Abraham? Yes. And Abraham was visited by how many? Heavenly beings. Three. Three, that's right. And these angels came to visit Abraham. They also went to check on the city, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Was Sodom and Gomorrah good cities or bad cities, Josiah? Bad cities. They were bad cities, you're right. And they were so bad that God was about to do what? Strike them with fire. Yeah, he's going to punish them with fire and brimstone. So these angels came to Abraham, and they came to investigate the city to see how bad it was, and if it really deserved punishment. And so that there was not even ten righteous people in the city. And then fire and brimstone came out. I destroyed that city. Look behind you. Let's see how it looked like. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Whoa, look at that. Look at the fire coming down. Oh my. Oh my. And we see the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is an example of what will take place. 
the end of time against the wicked. And so we see that the third angel's message is a very serious warning. Yes. yes. It's a very serious warning. But there's a glimmer of hope in this message. Although it seems very fearful, although the punishment of God is going to be upon those people who disobey him and those who worship the beast and his image, we see that there is a glimmer of hope. The angel says, Here is the patience of the saints. The saints are who? Are they bad people or good people? Good. That's right. Are they Satan's people or God's people? God's people. God's people, that's right. And so the saints, it says that they are patient. How are God's people patient during this time? They allow they to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. These saints, God's people, they're patiently being what? Loyal. Loyal and faithful to God. Even when people said, if you don't do this, you're going to die. Just like in the fiery furnace. Just like in the fiery furnace. And you know what these saints are also called? 144,000. That's right. The 144,000. The 144,000 are the group of people that are going to be faithful to the very end. Until Jesus comes. I want to be part of that group. How about you? Me! Yes. Me. Yes. We want to be part of that group, don't we? And this group of people, the saints, what do they do? They, number one, what do they do, Josiah? They keep the commandments. This is the Ten Commandments that I did for a craft. The first commandment is, have no other gods. The second commandment is, have no idols. The third commandment is, honor God's name. The fourth commandment is a special one that talks about the Sabbath. The fourth commandment is to honor the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. The fifth commandment is to honor your parents. The sixth commandment is do not murder. The seventh commandment is do not commit adultery. The eighth one is do not steal. The ninth commandment says do not lie. lie. And the lastly, the last one says do not covet. May, May God help us to keep all his commandments. Here is the patience of the saints. And here are they who keep the commandments of God. And how are they able to keep the commandments of God? And the faith of Jesus. Faith of Jesus. Through the faith of Jesus. They have the same faith that Jesus had. And that same faith is what allowed Jesus to overcome the world. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. When it says that they keep the commandments of God, how many commandments are they keeping? Ten. Ten, including which commandment? The fourth commandment, the Sabbath. The Sabbath, that's right. So in other words, the 144,000 are the group of people that also are Sabbath keepers. They keep all the, not only do they keep all the Ten Commandments, they also keep the Sabbath commandment as well. And the Sabbath commandment is what? The seal of God. The seal of God. That's right, the seal of God is the Sabbath. And all who embrace Satan's falsehoods will be destroyed in order for justice and love to be restored in the universe. God will have to destroy sin once and for all, including who? Satan. Satan. Exactly, Satan. And only those who put their trust in the loving Savior, Jesus Christ, what will happen? He will save us. He will save us. That's right. He will save us and also transform us into a new person. And this new person will reflect love of God. And God can do that for us when we put our trust in Him. Do you guys trust Jesus? Yes. Do you love Him? Yes. Do you want Him to save you? Yes. He's the only one who can save us, right? Yes. Nobody can save us. Except Jesus. Except Jesus. Do you guys want to be 
like Jesus? Yes. yes. And do you want to be a new person? Yes. Yes. Amen. Your God will do that work in and through us. The third angel's message, very serious warning, but it has hope at the end. And for, I'm so thankful for what Jesus can do for us. Aren't you? Yes. yes. Let's thank Jesus right now and ask Jesus to do that work in our lives, to save us and transform us to be just like him. Dear Jesus, thank you for the study about the third angel's messages. Please help us to be transformed like you and always be like you. Please be with us today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We finally concluded the three angels' messages, and we have the Prophecy Kids to thank as well for guiding us through this study. Thank you, Prophecy Kids. And we really want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and uh, share it, and also like the video. And if you'd like to get more uh, up-to-the-minute details and updates about a video that comes out, please make sure you hit that bell so that you'll be notified in the link below. In the link below. That's right. So, well, God bless you all. Until next time. Bye. Look at that! What is it? Is that Jesus?